Hello, I'm here today with uh, Mark Higgins, who's educator and trainer at UMETSAT, and he's going to be talking about their monthly European weather movie for April. Hi there. So at the beginning of the month, we're looking at a, an unsettled and quite variable picture across Europe. There's going to be a few things to look out for as we go through the month. You might want to have a just quick look now. If you have a look at the north of the Gulf of Finland, you'll see some sea ice. The Baltic states north of Poland, you'll see all that blue on the ground, which signifies snow. And uh, just watch these changes as we go through the month. You may also want to have a look at the shade of green on some of the land as we go through the month and as spring really starts to arrive and we start to see vegetation growth, you will start to see a lot more green across Europe. So the beginning of the month in the western parts of Europe started off relatively calm, settled and stable. So over the UK you've got a bit of high pressure and uh, an easterly flow. Quite gentle winds there. This will change as we get through across the month. Here on the morning of the 5th, you can start to see um, some low cloud, probably fog, just forming on the eastern side of the Black Sea. That'll dissipate as we go through the day. And there you go, on the 6th, it's no longer there. So at this part of the month, we're starting to see the westerly flow come back to the UK, these frontal systems building up that are going to come and bring some more rain across Western Europe. In some other parts of Europe, you'll see the flow coming up from the south, bringing warmer, moist Mediterranean air, in this case, just coming up over Turkey. And you can start to see the contrasts in the way that the air is moving across Europe, the sort of battleground between the cold northerly air, the warm southerly air, the maritime air. What the atmosphere is trying to do is find a balance between all these airflows. So some air descends, some air rises. Um, sometimes this will bring rain. Sometimes it brings more cloud. Uh, sometimes it brings clear skies. So right now coming into the 10th, a lot of cloud across Europe. The blue clouds will represent the higher clouds here. A lot more potential for rain underneath these clouds. A strong westerly flow coming across most of Europe. So we're starting to get into much more unsettled weather, a lot more rain at this particular stage of the month. Overall, a lot of the meteorological services were reporting that the month was colder than usual, um, with a lot of variation in the weather reported. So the UK, for example, was reporting that in general, the southern parts of the UK, England and Wales were drier than normal, and the northern parts, Scotland, were much, much wetter than normal. We might make some statements about comparisons with previous months or previous years. There are a lot of people working within satellite meteorology who make these comparisons scientifically with the data. One example would be the Climate Monitoring SAF. And with their data, what you can do is really get out the anomalies, the changes from month to month that you can see from the satellites. As we start to get into the 15th and 16th, we had quite a few reports across Europe of temperatures getting into 20 degrees. So there were 20 degrees in Denmark, UK, Germany, Switzerland were all being reported at this particular point. So a lot of warmth, good opportunity for the plants to start growing and for the vegetation to really, really kick off. So you're now starting to see a lot more cloud-free days in the southern parts of Europe here. And this is really what the vegetation has been waiting for. A lot of sunlight getting to the ground, a little bit more green starting to appear in those images. 
This is a quite late start to spring. So there are a few of the weather services who are starting as we get into kind of the middle into later on in and this particular phase of the month, starting to issue pollen forecasts. Just as we're looking at the 18th and 19th, there are a lot of cloud-free areas just over Europe really helping the vegetation to grow. Interesting phenomena that's just starting to grow in the Mediterranean at Genoa low. So over the next couple of days, you'll start to build a small low pressure. There it is just forming there in the, um, the afternoon of the 19th, just starting to form. And that eventually is going to bring a lot of snow to the Alps. So if you just look at uh, southern France, northern Italy, the cyclonic circulation um, just starting to build and now bringing some of that cloud so it brings the moisture off the Mediterranean, takes it up over northern Italy and into Switzerland. The uh, southern Swiss Alps were reporting up to a metre of snow as a result of this. You can really see it very well defined here on the 20th and 21st. At this period, quite settled weather in the UK, so associated with that low and away, there's uh, just in the southern UK, there's a high pressure, which leads to quite settled weather there. Another beautifully clear day across a lot of Europe there on the 24th. Denmark was reporting lovely high temperatures, as were a lot of uh, meteorological centres across Europe. Again, if you look at the sea ice, you can really start to see that it's disappearing. That snow that you maybe saw across the Baltic states and northern Poland at the beginning of the month, that's now disappeared. So we're really starting to see the vegetation growth, the end of uh, winter um, across most of Europe. Just here on the 25th, there was some stormy weather reported in northern Denmark that resulted in a small tornado. And just in Biscay here, you can start to see some low cloud, probably fog. And those straight lines in that fog are most likely to be ship tracks. So they look uh, artificial. They don't look naturally formed and very, very straight, very thin. Similar to contrails you get uh, from aircraft, but of course formed in the fog. Here on the 27th, you can see an interesting phenomenon. You can see that fog as it's traveling across the Black Sea just towards Sevastopol. And you can see how it forms and really matches the shape of the land. And you can watch how it changes shape and uh, decays as the day progresses and the uh, area gets warmer. Another thing that might be interesting to look at, if you look at the Caucasus Mountains, so just between Russia and Georgia, just to the east of the Black Sea, there's a mountain range there. And you see the air as it flows over those mountains, you'll start to see clouds forming where the mountains are. So you can see that effect here, just as we come into the morning of the 29th, if you look at that mountain range, you'll start to see the clouds building. So this is about three o'clock in the afternoon there time, you really start to see that convection kicking off. So that solar heating and a combination of the air being lifted by the mountains really generating quite strong convection. In the northern North Sea across Faroe Island at this point, um, a strong storm reported as well.